In this tutorial, we'll cover importing your models into a Keyshot scene. What I'll do here is I'll select the little import dialog, uh, and that pops up with a window asking me what kind of model I want to actually import. If you ever want to know what kind of models can be imported in a Keyshot, if I just hit this little drop down where it says all formats, you can get a list of all the different file formats that are native uh, files that Keyshot accepts. So we'll take native Maya files, uh, solid edge assemblies, uh, unigraphics, alias, you name it. We also take all the common exchange formats. So JT files, step files, I just, right, you can see all these different files here. The file that we're going to be working with today is going to be an NX assembly. So I'm an NX user, uh, previously Unigraphics. So I'll select this part right here. That's my master assembly file. Uh, and all these other parts are referenced by this assembly file. So I'll go ahead and hit open. And let's talk about these import settings. By default, Keyshot is going to center the geometry and snap it to the ground. So this has always been the same. One thing that's been updated for six is that scale is by default always respected. So there's no keep original or automatic scaling. Whatever you build your model in will respect those units whenever it's imported in Keyshot. Up orientation is going to depend on your 3D modeling software or the file type that was used to save it out. Usually the default is fine for the files that you bring in, but if you're ever importing uh, some type of file, let's say a step file, and every time it comes in sideways, well, try toggling this up orientation, usually between Y and Z will get you covered. I'll keep the environment and camera settings the default. Materials and structures haven't changed too much. One thing that is new is this grouping. You can now group by either objects or materials for any file that you bring in. Uh, also layers, depending on the, how the file is prepared. Uh, in this case, since this is a similar structure to how SolidWorks works, or solid edge, um, the NX file is going to group by object, which is the which is the, the actual parts themselves. So if you have an assembly structure with sub assemblies, parts and bodies, it's going to keep that. Uh, by default, it's also going to link different objects based off of their color. And I'll show you what that looks like when we actually get into it. But that's auto linking, which is a, a new feature. Uh, you'll also notice, and those of you who are importing SOLIDWORKS models, you'll see here that you have a slider for tessellation quality. This is a control for how many triangles are in your scene. Basically, when your model comes in, we convert that from a NURBS model into a tessellated triangle version. Um, that means that whatever your nice curved geometry was has now been replaced by triangles. And by default, those triangles are usually pretty small. So when you keep it at the default, you'll have uh, a certain amount of triangles. And generally, that's going to be fine. If you're ever working with a model and you realize that the geometry looks a little faceted or segmented, you can always increase the tessellation value. And this is one where you shouldn't go from 0.2 straight up to 1. I definitely would not suggest that. What I would suggest doing is going from 0.2 to something like 0.3, see if that works, or 0.4. I usually cap out at around 0.5, and that's, that's an exception uh, rather than a rule. So I'll keep that at a default of 0.2, and we'll see what that looks like. Uh, pro users also have the option to import the NURBS data. So that means we'll import your actual CAD geometry uh, as well as keep the tessellated version visible. And I'll, I'll show you what that looks like. Actually, let, we'll hop into our sample scenes to see what that looks like. Um, but we'll talk about that because that's going to make a big difference on uh, your render speeds as well. So tessellation quality controls the quality of your geometry. NURBS data adds in um, the actual CAD geometry. But we'll go ahead and import, see what that looks like. Uh, it should come in as an assembly structure with full sub-assemblies and all of our parts and bodies uh, here under our scene tree. Okay, great. Uh, that imported pretty quick, no problems. And I can see over on the right-hand side that my model has come in with all the sub-assemblies and all that's being respected. You'll also notice that under my scene information, the units are being defined as millimeters. This is not what was the default in Keyshot 5. This is new for 6. But that means anything I do that's in relationship to real life units is going to be respected. So things like mold tech textures or DPI for labels. Um, but before you had to actually change the default. Now the default is set so that it always respects your original modeling units. Uh, I mentioned NURBS. So if I right click on my model, I can always hit look at and zoom in on some specific detail. So if I zoom in here 
and I get really, really close on this tiny little screw, uh, you can just barely see it, but that screw has some facets to it and that I can improve by increasing the tessellation value when I'm working. Um, the other option I have is to enable NURBS mode. So if I zoom in really close here and I enable NURBS mode, uh, that's going to go to, whoop, look at that. I've got some weirdness in my geometry. looks like that's on my end. Uh, I may need to fix that model. Uh, the downside with NURBS mode is, is also that it's a little bit slower. Actually, it's anywhere from two to 10 times slower. So generally, if the geometry isn't perfect, what I can do is I can go to the import dialog. I can reselect that part hit open, and I have the option to update the geometry. So what this will do is this will keep my geometry um, or, or actually any material assignments that I've made, uh, but now I can re-import that at a higher tessellation quality. So if I do that and hit import, then it's going to re-import it. It's gonna take a little bit longer. Your file's gonna be a little bit bigger. Um, but it's going to give me higher quality geometry. One misconception is that that makes your, you know, render times blow up and no, that's, that's not really it. It's more dependent on your render settings than anything else. But now if I right click and hit look at hotkey for that really handy one, control alt right click, uh, I can now zoom in and you'll notice that my little rounded parts right here are going to look a lot better and I don't need to resort to the NURBS rendering. So that's when you import, you have the option to work with NURBS. You also have the option to increase your tessellation just to make sure that we're getting better geometry. What I'll do is I'll right click and I'll hit look at model center. So that snaps me out of looking at that specific point. Uh, one of the last things I wanna mention in regards to performance while we're working, you'll notice that when I move my camera around, uh, that I am going to see shadows being calculated and that takes a little time to resolve with more complex materials that make that may take more time to resolve. So we always have the option of enabling performance mode. Uh, that's this little P icon right here. If I enable performance mode, then Keyshot speeds up. It turns down my ray bounces, uh, turns off all of my shadows and my global illumination so that Keyshot's going to run really, really quickly. This is a really great way of working with your material so that it runs a lot faster. It's not as accurate, but you can always enable performance mode just in that little button right here. Hotkey for that is Alt-P. Another great hotkey to keep in mind, especially when you start working with scenes with a lot of uh, glass or transparency is S. S will enable and disable shadows. So hitting S, you can see that I turn the shadows on and off and that's the only setting that it affects. Uh, but those are good to know. So that's a quick overview of kind of our workflow here as far as importing, uh, moving the camera around in some of those import settings. Next up, scene tree. Please don't forget to like this video if you found it helpful. For more tutorials, quick tips, and webinar recordings, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and you can learn more at keyshot.com learning. Thank you for watching.